I will end with the many lecture of how to be a silent evangelist because I know in your country specifically you will not be allowed much to preach and teach and speak the word of God freely in your career, in your relationships. People are very, you know, sensitive for this. Although others are pushing, you know, in your, in your country, others are pushing in their religion and ignoring all rules or legal issues. But still, we need to respect the legal issue. But there is always an area for silent evangelism. Silent evangelism meaning that you care for the salvation, you, you are busy with the idea, but you are not, you are not, you know, you will not make it in words. Nobody will tell you, you are preaching now, you are teaching, no. But all the motives, all the idea, all the um, background inside your heart. So, let's put it in few points. The first one, evangelist prayer opened the heart. It was written in the book of Acts. Lydia heard us, us because Luke was with Paul at that time. It's Acts 16, and from Acts 16, Luke accompanied Paul and the team of evangelism in Greece. Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Theatera who worshipped God. The Lord opened her heart. Before going to Philippi, Paul spent many days praying, what you want me to do? Because the service in Asia was stopped. The Holy Spirit, you know, was clear, don't serve here anymore. So they were stuck. They did not understand in the first minute what exactly the will of God. So they prayed a lot. So because of their prayer, when they started visiting Philippi for the first time, God opened the first heart in Philippi. Look to how Luke wrote it. The Lord opened her heart. So you need to be a silent evangelist because sometimes when you pray in your heart, you will find out that the guy in front of you, he will start talking about God. So it's like God opening the door. It's not you. You are not allowed to open the discussion. You will not push anyway, but God will open just by praying. This is part of the silent evangelist. And you know, this one was baptized and with all her family, and it was like the first family in Europe. Lydia was the first family in Europe because it was the start of service in Greece after Asia. Again, you know, uh, Nehemiah, when you read the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah was asked a direct question from the king. What do you request? It was very direct, but at that minute, because Nehemiah is a man of God, man of praying, he was a silent evangelist. He was not allowed to speak about his God in this condition. But he, I prayed to God of heaven. Then the king said to me, what do you request? He repeated the question because the guy, Nehemiah, did not answer. He took like one minute praying in his heart. So I prayed to the God of heaven. And then he started asking for the salvation of his people. And the whole story started. The second point, again, I'm repeating some of the ideas mentioned, but you know, to يعني, focus more on the final points. Love is a silent evangelism. As mentioned many, many times, our major tool in evangelism is to love people. And people accept the love. People can taste the Christian love. People can differentiate between the usual common life of the love of the people and the, the very unique Christian love. So, as mentioned for the book of God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit 
and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by devil for God was with him. So when Peter was speaking about Christ, he mentioned that he was just doing good for everyone. So healing people, doing good to people is one big way of evangelizing people. Whoever gives one of these little one only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. It was explained by some of the fathers that the cup of water will be the start of telling the truth. The cup of the cold water is just the beginning because may, maybe this one who received this water will, you know, start asking questions. Uh, when you love people around, people definitely will ask some questions silently. They may ask, why do these people love without purpose? Why Abuna Yohanna is caring for people uh, with such effort, with no reward? So they ask, and when they ask, there is nothing but one answer, because they love God, because they are motivated by their faith. So how nice is their faith? Um, what a beautiful life they live, because they live it in love. Again, how can we live like them? So these, you know, um, questions will, will come in their mind just because of your love. So when you show care and love, you are saying many things silently. And that's the silent evangelism. On the same level, you know, especially the merciful acts are silent witnesses. You know, in the parable of the Good Samaritan, it was very clear that the Samaritan did not speak any single word about God. But this Samaritan guy was like Christ. He cared so much for the sick man, for the one who were terminal, like dying, and he took him to the hospital, he paid money for him, he felt responsible for him, but there was no chance to speak. But let's let it be. Hopefully we all like good Samaritan. The, the whole world will change if we are just following this idea. Um, John said, St. John said, by, by this we know love because he laid down his life for us and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever had this world's goods and see his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth. And shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. So it's very clear that we cannot say we love God just because we come to the church. If we love God, we should care for the poor. We should think of these people who, are, who have nothing in their life. Let, it, let me put it this harsh. The money we have and we are not using may stand against our salvation. The many things we have in our houses and we just keep it for the future. And most probably we will never touch it because we don't need it. And many people are in severe need for whatever we have. Actually, this is against the Christian teaching. لازم نخاف. معلش خلينا أقولها بقى بالعربي. البلاد دي علمتنا الفلوس أهم حاجة. وعلمتنا الأنانية. Because this is the mind of devil. The mind of devil is to think of yourself and to think of money. Mainly to focus on yourself, your family, and on money. 
And when you focus on these two, you are not ready for the kingdom of heaven, even if you are Christian. So we have to confront our mind, our conscience. We need to give more, we need to share, we need to think of others. We need to come out of our comfort zone to go out, to think of the 80% of human beings who are suffering from poverty and sickness. 80% are poor in the world. And you cannot say they are living far away. It's not any more far away because in few hours you can go anywhere in this, this world. In the early days of the church, they spent months to go to any country. Now we spend hours to go to any country and we can afford paying any ticket. So look at, it's clear. We have to, have to do something to share more. At least give part of your schedule in the year. At least give more than the tithe. You have to look to the whatever you have in your house, in your account, to ask yourself, Because most of us are just doing what others do. But we are not doing what Christ would do. We are just thinking the same way that anyone here in this country think. We are not thinking in a Christian way. That's why we are not evangelizing anyone. We are losing our, our families, our members, the closest people. We are not gaining any because we are not following Christ's teaching. So again, the merciful acts will work for evangelism as powerful as any sermon given by Paul or Peter. It happened in the early days of the church. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the church of Macedonia, that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liber liberality. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing, imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. The saints mean the poor. In, in the tongue, in the language of St. Paul, he was always saying the saints, he mean, meaning the poor. And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord, then to us by the will of God. Um, so, silent evangelism is praying, loving, be merciful, and also bearing trials and persecution. I remember a story happened in New York a few years ago. There was a child, Christian child, he had cancer, and they could send him from the village in Upper Egypt to be treated in New York. This little child, who were in real love to God and to the church, the whole hospital, a very big hospital in New York, they knew the Coptic church, and they loved his Lord because of this child. Because this child was always saying, I love God, I'm happy with the cross, I'm bearing the pain, I'm ready to go to heaven, I'm not afraid. So all nurses, all doctors, all staff of the hospital visited this child. He could evangelize to hundreds of people. Most of them are atheists because he, he, he had nothing to say. But he expressing his belief, his faith. He just, he suffered with Christ. He stayed thankful, praying God in the hardship. And that was a witness to God. So that's another way of silent evangelism. Because at that time you need not to speak words. People can see the face in his face. Can see the truth in his strong belief. 
you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Asia who believe. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Asia, but also in every place your face toward God has gone out so that we do not need to say anything look to this we do not need to say just because of their endurance their long suffering their persec yani, bearing their persecution everyone knew Christ for they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus who delivers us from the rest to come. So again, when you bear the trials and persecution, that's a great, a great, um, you know, kind of sermon given silently to all the world. El Baba Tawadros kept saying that the martyrs of Libya, uh, the martyrs of Libya could make uh, the best um, missionary service for the Coptic Church. So Hadaa Libya, أعلنوا عن الكنيسة الأبطية في العالم أكثر من أي كاهن أو أو أسقف أو أي كارز. لأن هم استشهدوا بإصرار وبحب وبصبر فالحياة اللي عملوا ده كان أجمل شهادة للمسيح من غير حاجة. So the martyrs are witnesses. يعني they are the best evangelists because they do not speak but they die. They rather die for Christ. And many of them were like young men leaving their families and I visited many of the houses of these people they are very poor. And they never thought of, you know, what did we leave for our family? What did we do for our children? They, they do not think our way of thinking. They just focus on Christ, on heaven, on their mission. They were happily dying for Christ. So the whole world listened to this sermon, the silent sermon given. Um, most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. You all know that the blood of the martyrs were the best seeds of, of the church. Uh, during the martyrdom of Saint Damiana, they said that 3,000 people accepted Christ and believed in him and were going to be baptized and many of them followed her in martyrdom. For Saint George, the, man, the saint of our day, Saint George, you know, stayed seven years in persecution and in trials, in, in pain. And during the seven years, thousands of people believed in Christ. But Saint George was never a preacher, was never a teacher. He had no chance to speak much about Christ. But he was in love with Christ. He cared for the salvation of everyone. So this way is also another way of silent evangelism. Again, being honest and the integrity, the faithfulness of any Christian guy is another witness for God. I, I know most of you working here cannot speak about God in your career in your hospital, in your school, in your whatever you do, you are not allowed to speak about religion, I know. But just being the best man in this place, the very much faithful one, the, the integrity of you and your uh, career, actually speak about your Christianity. Um, was written by St. Paul, not pilfering but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things so you show all virtues all values 
silently while working. Doing so, people will look up to you to see Christ in you. Let your light be shine, so shine before men that they may see your good works. Glorify your Father in heaven. You may become blameless and harmless, children of God, without fault, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. You have many stresses, many pressures here, especially the young age here, because all people around are easily living their life doing sin, and they never think of that they are doing any bad, any wrong. So just being pure in life, when you stick to the values of the Bible, when you are really a man of God, this without any words will speak out loudly about you know, your faith in Christ. Another way to evangelize silently is to have peace. Because nowadays especially the world lacks peace. There is no peace anywhere. There is no peace in the media, there is no peace in career, there is no peace in transportation, there is no peace in relationships. People lack so much the meaning of peace. But our king is the king of peace. Our church is the city of peace. Our fortune is that we have the peace not even of this world, but the peace given from the heaven, from above. So by just having this peace, peaceful heart, peaceful mind, peaceful attitude, peaceful relationships, you silently speak about God. So even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed and do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a a reason for the hope. That's in you. The hope is related so much to peace. Because of the hope, you have peace. You believe in Christ. He is your shepherd. He is your savior. He is your father. He is your friend. He is the one responsible for every single thing in your life. So you are happy. Because of this hope and faith, you feel the peace. All problems just in his hands. He the Pantokrator, he the Almighty. So all these meanings will, will help you to live in peace. And just people look at you. Living in peace, they will come asking you, we love to be like you. We wish. And if they cannot express it, you know, you know by words they feel it in heart. That they wish to live the same peaceful life. Uh, it was written... You know, while in Egypt was uh, a great cry, there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as was not like it before, nor shall be like it again, but again it's none of the children of Israel. So while everyone crying outside, we, the people of God, the children of God, we should have different taste of life. We are not crying the same way. We are enjoying the Father words of God. Shall a dog move its tongue against man or beast that you may know that the Lord does make a difference between Egyptian and Israel. Now the difference is not between Egyptian and Israel, between the whole world nations and the believers. There is a big difference, and this difference speaks silently about our faith. Nechten, the last one, is getting ready for redemption. Try to be ready not only to speak, not only to love everyone, not only to pray for people around, not only to be faithful in whatever you do, but also try one day to be ready to die for people. Because Christ died for you. And if you follow his steps, you will love the eternal life much more than you love your day here, your life here. You love people more than you love yourself. When you reach this level, you will be ready to die for others. 
if you reach the, that level, actually, evangelism will move like a fire. Because this is the best example of love given by the Lord himself. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Go your way, behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. What do you ex expect when you see lambs among wolves? Most probably, after a few minutes, wolves will attack lambs, will kill them, will eat them. But actually, Christ said so. He came like a lamb, and the wolves ate him. And we are the same. We are living like lambs among wolves. So, even so, yes, they may eat us, they may kill us. But again, as written by some of the forefathers, the wolves will change into lambs. The miracle will happen that the world of wolves will be transformed into world of lambs. So it's another silent evangelism. Glory to God. Amen.